Okay, this is Bruce, and this is another episode of IT Security Jobs Risk Management Framework uh, Jobs. I just made that up. Okay, so what I do on these weekly videos is I talk about actual job descriptions, job offers, job opportunities, career opportunities that I'm getting in my inbox. So you, what you're looking at over here, anyway, <laughs> what you're looking at is my my inbox of a job description. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dive into this. And this one's for a cybersecurity risk ex expert in Minnesota, in Egan, Minnesota, and it's a 12 month contract. Like I said before in the previous videos about these jobs, the IT security jobs, is that the names are pretty arbitrary they like they kind of throw names out there there's no as far as I know there's no standard on how they name it so you really got to dive into the actual job description to see if you're a match and the reason I do these videos is because for two reasons really for noobs people who are trying to get into IT security maybe you're an IT professional maybe you work health desk but you want to kind of specialize maybe you uh, are just going from scratch, you're, you're a student in college or, or whatever, you wanna get into IT security, this will give you an idea of what you get back when you put your resume out there and, um, and, and kinda give you an idea of what the job market looks like. And for people who are already in the job market, this might even be a job opportunity for you, but keep in mind, I'm recording this on sometime in July, July 2018. Okay, just let's just leave it there. So let's get into this. I have an open position with one of my clients and the job description is, okay, so this is, this is first of all coming from a, a technical recruiter. This is usually a third party agency that all they do is go out and try to recruit people for a specific job for a third party client. The third party client is sometimes a government, sometimes local, sometimes federal government, sometimes it's private agencies that are trying to get people. They don't have the time or resources, so they hire another agency to actually do that for them. And that's why a lot of times it seems like they're coming from India or Pakistan or wherever, right? Okay, so anyway, they say, I have open position for one of my clients. Job description is the same as below. If you find yourself comfortable with these requirements, please reply back to me with an updated resume. And it has a a phone number there. I'll link, put more of the information below if you actually wanna contact these people for this position or future positions that they have. But the job title is a cyber security risk expert. Okay, and the location is Egan, Minnesota, and it's a 12 month contract. That can mean several different things, but they're basically, what they do in these contracts is they give themselves about six months to 12 months to figure out if the person's a good fit. But sometimes the contract really is, it only goes for 12 months, meaning they only have enough money to pay you for 12 months and they gotta let you go because the work is done. So it just depends. That's why you have to really talk to the managers, talk to the people who are actually putting this job out there. Okay, job description. Interview mode is gonna be over the phone or Skype which I've done before. I've gotten jobs via just having an interview over the phone before and then not seeing the person's face, just did the work and not seeing the person's face for like a year, two, three years. So that that's legit. And then they're looking for somebody who is a US citizen. Now, the last one we did, we, we had uh, one that actually would allow a US citizen or somebody who was, was a visa holder or someone with an authorization to, to work in the United States. But this one is only for US citizens or green card holders. So they're very specific about it. All right, let's go here. It says you must be able to get a public trust clearance, a PTC, public trust clearance, right? Uh, so let's keep going here and let's put the description of a public trust clearance. That's what a public trust clearance is. You got different kind of clearances. You got top secret clearances. You got security clearances. You got different levels of security that they need you to be at for certain jobs. Okay, let's keep going. Cybersecurity risk expert. They're gonna design and administer procedures in an organization that sustain the security of, of the organization's data and access to the technology and communication systems. So that's interesting. So you're gonna be putting in policies that control access to the information to protect the conf confidentiality, integrity, and accessibility, availability of those systems. So that means you'll probably have to know a few few different uh, frameworks or maybe one framework. Okay, let's see. Secure, I mean, I'm talking, when I say framework, I'm talking about security compliance. Primary responsibilities, and this is gonna describe kind of what is security compliance, what, what exactly are they want here. Primary responsibilities include 
assess the risk exposure of proprietary data through weaknesses in the platform access procedures and forms of access to the organization systems and data contained within them. You're going to identify and prioritize organization risks and present those risks to leadership. This sounds like stuff that I actually do. This is the kind of in-between kind of things that, you, that I do in my profession. This is very much sounding like security compliance. You're going to develop, document, and execute containment strategies. So what they're saying, let me see if I can put this in layman's terms. What they're looking for is somebody who knows like security best practices. And that doesn't mean that you actually have to know how to do it. Like for example, that means that I don't have to, when I go in and work for these guys, they don't necessarily want me to go in and put the security controls on the system, which means let's say if they had, um, Linux right and Linux has this thing called PAM that allows you to put authentication on a Linux system or let's say Microsoft let's say they had a Microsoft system and they they really needed somebody to implement uh, the authentication uh, like say Active Directory on so there these guys aren't looking for somebody to do um, Active Directory to install Active Directory and maintain it and then restrict access that's because if they wanted that they would have said it here and it doesn't say that here they want somebody to make sure that the Active Directory directory has proper security in there which means you have to know security best practices in security to know okay um, I know that active active directory has to have these security controls or I know that somebody would be able to infiltrate the system because they're not supposed to say put a domain controller into a DMZ without um, without proper security levels, right? They, they'll know that best practices is not to put your main assets in a DMZ. So I know I'm throwing a lot of words out there like DMZ or like security compliance and stuff like that. But that means, you know, you really have to have a uh, common, you have to know the common knowledge of security, right? Because to a security person, they're going to know, they're going to have a, a general idea of what I'm talking about here. But if you don't know like the basics, let's, there's some uh, security certifications that will offer you this basic level of understanding that security plus the cap, the um, ISC2 cap is also a, another good one. Anyway, let's keep going here. Additional responsibilities may include coordinating efforts with multiple business units during response meaning the system gets hacked and then you have to co coordinate with these with these guys to respond to a security threat develop requirements for technical capabilities for cyber incident management um, and that's like if you had again you had an incident there's a system that gets compromised it has a virus on it you're part of that team to figure out okay what are the requirements to stop this entirely investigate major breaches of security and recommending appropriate control uh, improvements like the system got got infiltrated how can we what can we do you're gonna work with a team to say what can we do to fix this to make sure nobody else gets in our system we know we're being attacked from here here and here what can we do in the future to fix this correlate IP addresses related to events with specific systems and and devices uh, pinpoint and locate compromised systems so you might have to do like scanning to see what systems have been compromised and then what do we do to recover these systems and to re it says uncover security uncover security and compliance violations that's again right into security um, going into security compliance now let's kind of skip down below here oh security logs um, and you might, they're saying that you may, this, your tasks may include looking at the security, network security uh, logs and looking at trend analysis. So looking, seems like they're really focusing on somebody to figure out, to, to both get the policies in place to stop breaches and then policies in place to say what you're going to do if a breach happens, like meaning somebody is in the system or a virus breaks out. What do we do? to write you know you have to have right procedures on what to do in those cases and then do those procedures match uh, the best practices of that industry and then they're also looking for somebody to possibly look at the actual event logs and work with other people in the in that environment to work through okay where did they attack from how can we stop this from happening again so that means that you're, they want somebody really strong with best practices experience level okay five years of experience in security aspects of multiple platforms multiple platforms meaning windows microsoft maybe mac something like that operating systems 
software, communications, and network protocols. So you have to have a general idea of what these things are and, and have five years experience having worked in this field in doing this job, doing something very similar to this job. They're asking for a bachelor's degree in information technology, computer science, or master's degree in information systems or related disciplines. That means technical they're looking for technical bachelor's degree, but what I've found is they're usually pretty pretty flexible about degrees. If you have just any kind of technical degree, they'll accept it. And sometimes I've even seen them accept like degrees that have nothing to do with it. So it really depends. I wouldn't let that be a showstopper. You should have a bachelor's degree, but if it's let's say in liberal arts or something, like it's, let's say it's in uh, well I, you know if it's in drama or something, that probably won't help you. <laughs> But if it's in linguistics, you know, it has nothing to do with IT, but I've, I'm telling you, I've seen people with a bachelor's degree and something unrelated get this job, but they, they usually have experience in this job. So just to kind of give you an idea, just to give you an idea, like I, if you want to check out a previous interview I did with this dude named, uh, with James, James does technical stuff, but his actual background and degree is that he has a bachelor's degree in economics. So he's doing some pretty high level technical stuff. So just That's just one example of many that I know that people had a bachelor's degree in something unrelated to technical, but they were, over, they were able to overlook it because the person had a little bit of uh, knowledge in what they wanted or they had actual experience in that area. So, okay, certifications, this is one that also intimidates people but they want they they desire one or more CISSP CCSP PMP or CIS uh, CISA certifications or C risk certifications and um, the the fact that they kind of list a PMP here is interesting because that's just uh that's program management that's not really so that means that this is really not a technical job but you have to have some knowledge have some sort of uh, technical understanding of all the things that they listed here in uh, additional responsibilities and in uh, primary responsibilities. I think that's it guys. But like I said, these videos I'm going to try to do them. I'm going to do them once a week so that you guys can get an idea of this career field. And if this is helpful, you know, put a comment in, in the section below. If you actually have a corporation and you're looking for somebody, a lot of IT people and um, IT beginners and, and uh, IT security professionals actually watch this channel for some reason so if you happen to have a corporation job where you're looking for people for this market uh, drop me a line I'll put my contact information below and uh, maybe I can do a video for you gives me a little bit of way to have content and um, gives us a business relationship so uh, that's it guys check out the next one next week see you later